Let me come back to you immediately, Sir Gordon Wavumuno. You are a man of many, many titles. Among others, you are called Professor Gordon Wavumuno. You are called His Excellency Gordon Wavumuno. You are called the Chairman Wavumuno, Chancellor Wavumuno, Doctor Wavumuno. Is there any particular title that makes you feel very comfortable among these? Sir Gordon? Uh, it's not the titles which makes, makes me comfortable. It's what I am myself. Mm -hmm. What makes me comfortable is what I do mm -hmm. and what I have achieved mm -hmm. and what I've gone through and what still I intend to do in my life. You have been knighted by the Queen of England. Yes. There are not very many people uh, that come from the sort of background you and I come from, frankly, uh, that could access that sort of title. To what extent would you say, since attaining that knighthood, that your life has changed? Has that knighthood changed your life one way or the other? Well, the titles, in my view, are decorations. Mm -hmm. To achieve it, such a knighthood, you don't apply. You are selected. How you are selected, you, I don't know. This is the second title I received from the Queen of England. The first one is uh, Officer Brother. On top of that, a commander mm -hmm. of St. John's Ambulance in Uganda, which has even a uniform on it. I have a uniform. Interesting. Yes. But having said that, it uh, goes with what I've been doing in my life. Okay, participate in the community development, mm -hmm. helping the needies, mm -hmm. helping people who are in the hospital, in mm -hmm. the prisons, those like Muslims when they have their day and uh, they, 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 they are going to celebrate their, 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 their ED. ED Amor, Barak, ED Amor is there. I'm not there to show off that I have money, but I think that they need something. They need somebody to come in and give something and I'm always doing it. I understand, in fact, that uh, there is a school, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, called Gayaza, in Rugaga, where you went to school yourself, and that you have never forgotten, in fact, where you came from, that you've been supporting that institution. Is that true? That, yes. That school in is Gayaza, Isingiro. It is on a hill called Gayaza. Mm -hmm. The school is Yakatimba. I went to school in the late, 50s, and uh, a number of my colleagues uh, graduated. They have worked for the government and UN. They are retired. As of some of them are members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But the point is, don't forget where you come from. That's what I have in my mind. That uh, as much as uh, Shaka Shali have been in America for many years, Very you many. can't forget Kabali, Kabali with Emondi <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> And the Sogam and what have you. Yes. If you can't. Yes. <laughs> now, talking about not forgetting, forgetting where you come from, there is this very important pillar, treasure, in your life. When you are a kid, you are young, you actually did go there to do your internship in business. We're talking about the Merari family. Tell us a little bit about this Asian family that helped to access you to some business skills. I will start by saying that maybe my dad also had genes in his life, in his body. Mm -hmm. It's a long story, and you can't complete that story here. But he left Buganda that time, which was uh, Budu, Kochi, and went to Ankole on his own, mm -hmm. just to do the trade. Yes. And there he was recruited as a clerk at the Gombora chief level. He became a Muruka chief, a Gombora chief and he became a transporter, produce buyer. Mm -hmm. That's how I came to know the whole Ankola and Ichigezi. Then uh, during that time, the old producers were buying, we were selling them to Melali. Sadru Melali was the head of the, the family. Mm -hmm. And I started saying that, yes, you bring in one truck. These were old primitive trucks, Koma, Ford Kasang. To start it, they had no batteries. You just take, get it. Uh, uh, iron bar, put yes. it in the front, yes. you roll it, I remember. and the engine is on. Then I asked that, I said, these guys are, we, we are earning this money, and 
What do we do? He said, no, you have to help me on business, go to school, and this and that. But I said, also, you, you, you dropped out in Kako, in the, the massacre in school. You, you came to Mbarara to do business. Say, there is money in business more than even in the school. Mm -hmm. And I remember him telling me that, is there any school where you can uh, find a school where a minister or a president can go and become a president of a country or a minister? No. But if you do the business, you get money to keep you moving, you live in better life. And that time, he bought a radio, and everybody in the village, they were coming in to look at that radio, mm -hmm. to listen to the first radio in Uganda, mm -hmm. and the clock, the Muslim could come friends eh, to say, what is the time now they want to go and do their solar? Coming back to these Indians, when we came to the end of the relationship with Daddy in the business, because I said, Dad, I want to go. I said, where? Well, I want to go and work somewhere, because I've been working here all day and night. You give me 30 cents, you give me 50 cents. So I think I should go and work out and see how much money I can earn. So say this is your decision. Then I joined these Indians, Sadhu Merali, and they used to call me Kalani, Clark. Kalani, Clark. So I was responsible for buying, receiving all these coffee, cotton, and uh, all produce from Mungkole and Kigezi and other places. But one day they decided, because I was royal and I was even eating with the Indian first time, mm -hmm. no African were eating with Indian on the same table and been using the same bathroom was never there. But they allowed me and they loved me, they liked me, so they took me in the mining now. Chikagati, Chikagati. Merasandu, and the other places. Then we ended up in Mayanga, Kebisoni. Then there was a company, a British company, BMC, British Mineral Corporation. Mm -hmm. And I was the person to make the, to do the parking and load them on the Land Rover and with a driver. And then I could drive them to Chikagati from even Mirasandu, even from uh, Sema and uh, from uh, Kebisoni. You must and have been Mayanga. very, very young. Yes. I was below 18. Below 18? Yes. You had just completed uh, junior high school? Yes, I ran away from there because uh, I saw that there was no money because they were lacking somebody to supply Matoke and uh, ba the banana. But most of your kids wanted to go on to secondary school. They wanted to go to Ontario school, which was a great school at the time. You but, wanted but, to go in business. But most of those guys whom I was with in school today, financially, I can say I'm better off. <laughs> You're the man. Yes.